What is going on YouTube? Stay here. I'm your son Rico and I have to say to all my wonderful, beautiful face in the world. Mm, it's just miss you, miss you, love you, love you. For today's video, I'm doing deck profile of Maelstrom. Maelstrom recently got new support from the Champions of Asia Circuit. If you guys don't know, last weekend, well this weekend, that just happened, we had a Boost Road event at Sakakas, New Jersey. I, I went for Standard and Premium. Premium was honestly the funnest day I had. I played this deck the whole day. I did pretty well, actually. I went undefeated till like the fifth round. I lost to uh, OTT Geese. Uh, then I lost my seventh and eighth round to, OT to OTT Geese again. Um, but besides that, like all my matches were pretty much fun. I had a great time. I was happy, in honesty. A lot of my opponents actually gave me a lot of compliments. They were like, "Oh, I like your deck a lot. Your deck is, looks really looks really cool." Oh, can you deck list? And literally, I was just on cloud nine the whole time on Sunday because I was just happy. Like overall, I was happy that people were actually interested in into my deck. Um, I went in, I went into Sunday just playing this deck, just to have fun. I didn't think this deck would actually do good. It did very well, especially against um, uh, Bermudas and uh, OTT Geese. <laughs> Unfortunately, on Sunday, I, almost all my opponents were OTT Geese, but no, it, I, I still have fun no matter what. Um, there was one incident on Sunday. I'm not gonna really going to go into details about it. But besides that, like I said, Sunday on Premium, I actually had fun. I didn't think I would have fun, but I did. And it, I'm doing a deck, deck profile, the Maelstrom deck that I played with. There are a few changes, and I'm going to explain my reasons why. And here's a quick breakdown of the deck. Hope you guys like it. First, we'll do the Grade 3s. Uh, grade 3, Mel, Blue Star Maelstrom. This is the newest one, the new Maelstrom from the set. This card basically does is when you can counter blast one, the whole front board gets plus three each. And when a rear guard hits my opponent's Vanguard on the third or fourth attack, I can discard two cards and restand Maelstrom. Now Maelstrom puts puts a lot of pressure. That's the main the main factor of this Maelstrom. If I rush my opponent while they're still at, while they're still at grade two, and I have him, and if I have rear guards, most likely the Maelstrom will restand that turn if I hit a front trigger or two. Also, um, also the, the plus 3k to the front board, it makes magic numbers more easier. It makes my grade ones hit. It makes other. It, may, <clears throat> it can possibly make my triggers hit. So Maelstrom overall is like a good a good turn three play especially against my opponent when they're in grade two um a few of my matches my opponents were actually grade locked and i was like okay that's great for me because i actually have this maelstrom in the hand so with this maelstrom i could rush my opponent to death um overall it's a great card it's doing a lot of work i prefer this card over the break ride the break ride's good don't get me wrong but his effect is just more better it puts more pressure and it could help benefit my other rig guards by making magic numbers Next grade three is we have the stride break. Stride break basically does is whenever you stride into a maelstrom stride, kind of bus one, you can uh, put a maelstrom from the grave to the soul, and you can call a blue storm from the hand to the field, and it gets the restand for that turn. Now the stride break, it, it is like it's very it's very specific. You have to stride into a maelstrom in order to get it, but um, a lot of the cards in the deck are blue storm, so it's not that it's not that really hard. Um, most of the grade threes that should be in the grave are all maelstrom. I would be surprised if if you're playing any other grade three. But besides that, um, he basically gives me a fourth attack or a third attack guarantee. He gives me a restanding rear guard, and it and it sets up my plays. In this build, there's a lot of combo pieces, especially with the stride that gets the that gets the no guard and uh, crit. Uh, like it's, this deck is very combo reliant. You have to you have to set up a few pieces. He sets it up more easier just for the fact that he puts a maelstrom from the grave into the, into the soul. You need to have a bunch of maelstroms in the soul. That's the main point of the deck. I I I think it's really easy to do. There's only a few cards in the build that can, that can actually allow me to put maelstrom cards from the grave to the soul, and he's one of them. Also, his uh, second skill, the GB2 skill, it's broken, broken, broken. It's a plus two basically. Uh, oh, technically a plus one, but I see it as a plus two. So, uh, GB2, counter blast 1, at the end of your turn, if you had 4 attacks or more, you can counter blast 1, your opponent chooses one of his rearguards to retire it, and then you draw a card. That effect was so beneficial against uh, Bermuda Ange, it was beneficial against OTT Geese, it got rid of their Toms, it got rid of their their great 2s that add cards to hand, or the great 2s that, um, that looks at the top card of the deck whenever it attacks. It would just it just put in the finest of work and also gave me a card into my hand 
at times it would give me a trigger in my hand to make sure I can guard for next turn, or it, or it would give me another grade three maelstrom into my hand so I can strike next turn. That second ability is just super plus. I always want to go for it all the time. Unfortunately, he is counter blast heavy. I mean, both effects do require a counter blast, but in this deck, I do have a way to counter charge. It's not that easy, but then again, I mean, uh, I can set it up to counter charge a lot anyways. But yeah, he's basically the second grade three you want to be on. The first grade three you want to be on the blue storm maelstrom, and then on the second grade three you want to be on the stride break maelstrom. But again, uh, he's okay for a first turn ride. He sets up the combo pieces, but if you want to get the Excel circle, if you want to put more pressure on your opponent, you want to be in the blue, on the original Blue Star Maelstrom. And then random card, I play one Glory Maelstrom, the Cross Rifle Maelstrom. This card basically does is on the fifth, on the, I'm sorry, let me break five. When it attacks my opponent, um, he gets plus five, and my opponent can now use greater ones. Now this card, I've only used once throughout the whole time I've played it. There's no reason why I pick. I, I'm playing him overall, just for the fact that he is a no, he's an easy null guard. He can um, his effect isn't that hard to, to activate. Of course, like I could have put in the reverse maelstrom, but the re reverse maelstrom requires me to lock one of my units, and I prefer not to lock one of my units. I want all my units on the board. But besides that. Um, a lot of people are like, oh my god, do you actually use, use his skill? Oh my god, that's so broken. I'm like, I barely, I only, I've only used him once. I haven't really used him more than once. But, uh, but besides that, I want to play nine grade three maelstroms instead of eight. Just for the fact that in this build, I do search my grade threes and I ditch them to the grave really easily. That's the main point of the deck. That's the main engine of the deck. So that's the reason why I play nine grade threes instead of eight. Because I want to make sure I draw into my maelstroms. I want to make sure I I put enough of my maelstroms into the grave or have enough maelstroms in the soul. Next we have the gray twos, blue storm soldier, um, elder, elder moss. His effect is basically when, um, when you call him to rearguard or vanguard, you either reveal a maelstrom in your hand, if not he gives minus five. Yes, he's a 10k, he's a 10k rearguard slash vanguard, but all you gotta do is just make sure you have a maelstrom in your hand, which is not hard because in this build we play nine maelstroms anyways. So you should have one maelstrom in the hand anyways. Um, other skill, counter blast one, I can choose a maelstrom in the grave, put it in the soul, he gets plus four, and then he can attack my opponent's he can attack my opponent uh, in the back row. So he gives me a fourth attack and he sets up the whole maelstrom play. Now, like I said, there's only two cards that I there's only two cards at the moment that Blue Storm has that can put maelstroms from the grave into the soul. He's one of them, he's the main grade two that you want to have on rear on the rear guard circle. You usually don't want to ride him. I mean, if you want to, go ahead. I understand people want to have a 10k Vanguard. But preferably, I rec highly recommend to play him on the rear guard because the secondary effect is too crucial. Is very, very, very crucial for the deck to actually act to actually work. Because um, like I said, preferred grade 2 to have on the rear guard is this guy. And then the preferred grade 3 to have, the first preferred grade 3 to have is the new Blue Star Maelstrom deck with the XL. And I'll, there's a few cards in the deck that require to have a Maelstrom in the heart. So he puts it by turn two per turn three. You, you want to have this card at all times. Also for the fact that it gives me a fourth attack and he can possibly be a 14k attacker. With front triggers, he could be a 24, 24k attacker or a 34k attacker. So he does make magic numbers and it's just overall one of the best grade twos in the deck. A lot of people are probably going to hate me for this, but I play the old title assault. Now, the reason why I play the old ones is just for the fact that the new one, the the, the cost for the new one is too much for me. Um, if you guys don't know, the new Maelstrom requires a Soul Blast to resand him. Not too much of a fan of that because already in this build, we do Soul Blast a lot. So I'd rather not play the new Maelstrom. I mean, I'd rather not play the new Title Soul. This Title Soul basically almost does the same thing as the new one, but it just the cost for it is just not that big as the new one is. Um, with title salt and front triggers, it's just it's just too good of too good of a regard. So basically, when I have him, if I hit one front trigger, he's a 19k 19k attacker. Then after he attacks, he becomes a 14k attacker. God forbid I hit two front triggers, then he's a 29k attacker. Then goes down to 24 24k att attacker. Um, title salt or front triggers is just very unfair. I feel bad for my opponent, but then again, that's the main reason why we play Title Soul in the first place. Uh, again, he's a good grade two rush. He's a good um, turn three or turn four, 
turn four rear guard, especially if I stride into the maelstrom that gives 5k power to my rear guards. One of the newest grade twos, I play three algos. Algos, oh my god. This card, I underestimated a lot throughout the tournament, but this card put in so much work. It helped me in the grade two rush, it helped me rush my opponent when I had the maelstrom, the new Excel maelstrom, and they, and they were at grade two. It just puts in so much work. So his effect is whenever he's on the Vanguard circle and if he attacks my opponent's Vanguard, kind of last Soul Blast one, I can restand on one of my rear guards. And if he's on the rear guard circle, if he, if he attack and if it's the first battle of that turn, I can counter boss one and restand himself. So he's, a, he's basically a restanding Vanguard on the Vanguard circle and a restanding rear guard in the rear guard circle. Um, he gets me the extra attack, he helps me rush my opponent, especially if they don't, hit, if they don't damage check any triggers. Uh, before I was playing one of him because I was actually playing, uh, I was actually playing three of uh, Rascal Sweepers. Now Rascal Sweeper, his effect is basically is he's a 11k attacker, and when he attacks my opponent's Vanguard, if I have a Blue Storm, uh, if I have a Blue Storm Maelstrom as a Vanguard, I can switch him to the back and put the one the unit in the back in the front. So he does help me get another attack in, but again, I prefer to have a Resetting Rigard instead of him. Because he requires to go backwards, he requires to go to, go to the back row. Um, front triggers, they don't give power in the back row, they only give power to the front row. So he's basically pretty much useless whenever he moves to the back row. Not not too much of a fan of that. But besides that, uh, having him as 11k attacker worked out a lot. It made it made magic numbers, especially against uh, Bermudas, Shurinui, Royal Paladins. It made the magic, num magic numbers. But... Uh, having three algos is just more aggressive, puts more pressure onto my, onto my opponent, especially if they're still at grade two. Grade ones, we have the Battle Princess Thea. Basically, she's a beat stick. Um, if I have a Maelstrom Vanguard, she's a 9k. If I have a Mel, if uh, she's the second attack on my turn, then she becomes 11k. Um, the second effect, we it usually doesn't go off because I usually have her attacking first or third or last. Again, she's a beat stick, especially if, if my opponent's on grade two and if they have a 9k. Uh, 9k versus 9k or like I said I usually play her a lot I usually put on, on the excel circle so she'll be a 90k by herself and if I hit a front trigger then she's a 29k if I hit two front triggers then she's a uh, 39k next grade one we, pl we play a battle princess uh, Carilla I'm sorry if I say her name wrong Carilla basically is the end the search engine for the deck her effect is when placed on rear guard I can reveal a grade 3 from my hand, discard it, and then search my deck for a Blue Storm Maelstrom. Now, the Blue Storm Maelstrom has to be the actual Blue Storm Maelstrom. It can't be the new Stride Break, or it can't be the Glory Maelstrom. It has to be Blue Storm Maelstrom. So whenever I want to make sure I ride into the, into the original Blue Storm Maelstrom, I just call her out, ditch the Stride Break or ditch Glory, and search out for the, for the new Excel Maelstrom, and make sure I have it in my hand so I can ride it on turn 3. Again... The preferred ride is you want to be on the Blue Star Maelstrom first, and then you want to be on the Stride Break Maelstrom second. So she just helps that out. She also puts a Grade 3 Maelstrom into the Grave, which sets up my combo pieces with the Grade 2 that I just showed you, and also sets up the Grade 3 Stride Break that puts that puts Maelstroms from the uh, Grave into the Soul. So again, Search Engine, and she also Deck Thins, because Deck Thinning is Deck Winning. Deck Thinning basically increases chance of hitting triggers. We play 4... Tier Knight Theo, uh, before I was actually only playing two of him, I really underestimated him. A lot of people underestimated him. He's overall a great grade one. He puts a lot of pressure. And if he doesn't put a lot of pressure, my opponent doesn't care. He just takes the hit when he attacks my opponent's Vanguard. Or, or if he boosts the unit that hit my opponent's Vanguard, I can give plus 8k to another Rigard on the second battle. So, unfortunately, his effect doesn't go off in the first one. His effect only goes off in the second attack. And if it hits, it hits, it gives plus 8k to another regard. It makes up magic numbers, makes up, makes up better numbers. A lot of people underestimate it. They actually don't care about it. But whenever his attack does go through, I have another regard to attack with, another scary big regard to attack with. Um, usually, I, I usually put this behind the Vanguard. If not, I put it behind the, the 10k attacker, um, the one that gets plus 4. It just makes a huge column, and then it can possibly make another huge column. It gives plus eight to either Algos, it gives plus eight to Tidal So It just makes multiple plays live. Again, makes the greatest magic numbers. A lot of people do underestimate them. Overall, it's a great grade one. And then my last grade one, I play one random stride assist. Now, the reason why I play one random stride assist is just the fact that, like I said, in this build, 
you are doing a, a lot of deck thinning to get your grade threes out and to this, to put your grade threes in the grave or in, and then put them in the soul. So a lot of the times um, I don't have grade threes in my hand because they're already on the grave or the or they're on the soul. So I'm looking at my hand and I'm like, crap, I don't have a grade three to stride with. Usually he's there in my hand. He's like my last option to stride with. I hate discarding two grade twos or a grade two and grade one or God forbid three grade ones just to stride. Striding is really mandatory in this deck, um, if, especially if you're, on, if you're on the Strider Big Maelstrom. You need to stride every turn as much as possible. So that's why I make sure I have one uh, stride assist. I kind of want to bump it up to two, but I don't have the space. But for now, just having one, it comes in super clutch a lot of the times. A lot of the times when I run out of grade threes, I'm like, crap, I need a grade three. And then I'm like, oh, wait, no, I have him in my hand. So he helps out so much to make sure I can stride next for next turn. Trigger wise, we play for the uh, Sentinel draw triggers, pretty standard. And we play one random draw trigger. So I play five draw triggers. A lot of people are like, oh, why don't you play six? Why don't you just play four? A lot of people miss underestimate it a lot. A lot of people think the draw triggers don't do much, but it does a lot for Aqua Force. It makes sure I draw into my rear guards and make sure uh, that I draw into my grade three Maelstroms that I actually do need. Um, a lot of the times, yeah, I know, um, drawing draw triggers to my hand does suck, but um, you're drawing into Sentinel PGs, which isn't that bad. But draw striking and hitting draw triggers or hitting defensive draw triggers is very beneficial, especially for the fact that a lot, a lot of the times my opponent wants to attack my rear guards instead of attacking my vanguard. So whenever I hit a draw trigger, I'm like, great, I'm going to draw into another rear guard or it can help me draw into another grade 3 Maelstrom. Either way, um, F5 draw triggers, it's working pretty fine. Um, I kind of want to bump it up to 6, but I'm going to keep it at 5 because I'd rather play as many front triggers as much as possible. But um, with the 5 draw triggers, if I can hit like 2 or 3 draw triggers in one game, I'm pretty much set. Uh, 4 heal triggers, uh, that's pretty standard, not in my opinion. The reason why I play the new one and not the old one is for the fact that with the old one, I mainly use it to counter charge with, to soul charge with, but... And this build, uh, I don't really need to counter charge that much anymore because I don't really counter blast that much. I can counter charge easily with the G guard and the soul charging, I don't really need it. So I was like, you know what, let me just drop the old heal trigger and play the new one. The new one ha has a bigger number, um, bigger, um, bigger guard number and also has a bigger um, damage, um, damage tr uh, trigger check. So if I damage check him, it gives more power than the regular heal trigger. That's great. But besides that, pretty much, uh, I don't need the, the old heal trigger because I'm fine with counter charging and I'm fine with soul charging. And then, of course, like I said before, I play seven fronts. Um, some people kind of kind of already assume that I don't play crits. Seven fronts is so good in Maelstrom. You have no idea. Now, the reason why I say that is just for the fact that we in Maelstrom, there's a lot of restanding rear guards. We have the Tidal Soul, we have Algos, and we have any Blue Storm unit that that we get the, um, the Stride Break effect with. So, again, the front triggers, it makes magic numbers. It makes it helps me have my rear guards to actually have the chance of hitting my opponent's Vanguard or hitting my opponent's rear guard. Also, defensive-wise, if um, again, a lot of people rather attack Aqua Force rear guards, but if they attack my Vanguard first and if a damage check a front trigger, it gives plus 10 to all my front rows, not just my Vanguard, all my front rows. So this trigger is amazing offensively and defensively wise because it helps protect my rear guards during my opponent's turn if I damage check it. And my opponent's like, it, it happened like three times at regionals. They're like, wow, I can't attack your Vanguard or your rear guards because I, I didn't hit a trigger, but you did. You hit a, you hit a defensive front trigger. And I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> But um, I do want to play crits. I just don't have the space for it. I just think front triggers in this in Maelstrom right now is just too good. The starter we play Officer Cadet Eric. The main reason why I play him is just for the fact that you ride on you ride on top of him and you draw a card. That's it. Also for the fact that he puts another card into the soul. But uh, before this, I was actually playing the Blue Storm Cadet. His effect is when he boosts a unit on the third attack, and if it hits my opponent's Vanguard, look at the top five cards for a Maelstrom and add it to my hand. Now, I have two issues with this card. The first one, it has to hit my opponent's Vanguard on the third attack. So, let, so I have to have three attacking units. Let's say my opponent takes the first two attacks to the Vanguard. 
God forbid they damage trigger, they damage trigger trigger. That's it. Just makes my, my it makes my magic numbers less. It makes my attacks not go through. And God forbid my opponent actually has triggers in the hand. God forbid my opponent has a 20k shield or a 15k shield or a 10k shield. So the attack of that this unit is boosting doesn't go through. The other reason why I don't like this card is just the fact that you have to look at the top five cards, not seven, not ten, but top five cards. Do you know how hard is it to hit a Maelstrom sometimes? Like when attack, like whenever hit, his effect does go off, it's like a, it's still a 50-50 chance for me to actually get a Maelstrom out of the top five cards I have to my hand. It's happened to me three times at regionals where his effect went off and I didn't see a Maelstrom and I was like, wow, that was a waste. Um, <clears throat> oh, don't get me wrong. He's a great card. It's a great effect. He's just a really, he's a hard gamble. I prefer to have a, I prefer to have the starter, into, I, I prefer to have the starter in the soul because again, in this build, I do soul blast a lot. Usually before I would soul blast two cards, but now with him, I can soul blast three cards in one turn, I mean, in one game. And also for the fact that he gives me that six card easily by turn one or turn two. So uh, I just prefer him. Eric is just more safer, is more beneficial, is more consistent than the Blue Storm, the Blue Storm boot, uh, starter. Now onto the strides, we have the broken stride that makes the Maelstrom deck basically relevant. This stride does is basically um, I can flip over a card in my G zone and he gets the ability of for as many Maelstroms in the heart, um, minus one, my opponent can't guard those, with those grade levels. So let's say I have four Maelstroms in the soul, my opponent cannot guard with grade threes or lower. Let's say I have two Maelstroms in the soul, in, in the soul, my opponent cannot guard with grade ones or lower. Uh, let's say I only have one Maelstrom in the soul, my opponent cannot guard with grade zeros. Broken. Now his effect, uh, it's not that great against Protect Clans because his effect doesn't affect the Protect Marker. The Protect Marker doesn't have a grade. So whenever I go against OTT and it's like, crap, I'm already at a big disadvantage because his effect isn't that great. But his secondary ability is whenever he attacks my opponent's Vanguard on the fourth attack, uh, if I have two Maelstroms in the G zone, he gets plus five in a crit. So he's a potential 31k or 32k attacker with a crit. Um, He's amazing against against uh, OTT Geese, just for the fact that Geese can't use G guards because Geese banishes its G zone. So whenever I call him out, I check my opponent to make sure he doesn't have a protect marker in the hand. I'm like, great, he can't really guard this because usually I would have three Maelstroms in the soul. So then my 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 opponent is playing OTT Geese, can't guard with grade twos or lower. So this card is the finisher against OTT Geese. Also, is the finisher against almost every other deck. This is the main finisher you want to go into. The best part about him is the fact that he can flip over any card. So with his effect, I would usually flip over the, the, the G guard that counter charges, which is a great combo play. But you have to make sure you at least have two Maelstroms in the G zone, because if not, then his effect won't go off. He won't get that crit. Next stride, we have the Disaster Maelstrom. His effect is basically when I have a Maelstrom in the heart, when he attacks my, op when he, when he attacks my opponent, I can flip over a copy of himself. Give plus five to, to three units in the front row, and I can search my deck for a grade three and add to my hand. So he helps me make magic columns in the rear guards. He gives plus five to my title soul, plus five to Algos, plus five to uh, a blue storm that's going to restand. It's just great overall. He, he can, and he can also give plus five to himself. Um, adding the grade three to the hand <clears throat> sets me up for next turn. It makes sure that I can, like, that I can stride next turn. It makes sure I have the right grade three for next turn. It's just so good. Also, again, no, deck thinning is deck winning, and deck thinning increases the chance of me hitting two front triggers. Hitting two front triggers in this deck is is game changing. Like it destroys my opponent; they can't do anything about it. But uh, again, he's the, basically the first stride you want to go into every single time. But you have to make sure you have a maelstrom in the heart. So you have to make sure that you use the grade two to put the maelstrom in, in the heart in the soul, or you or you um, str stride break from the stride breaker maelstrom to put a maelstrom from the grave into the soul. Next stride we have two Alexandros. Uh, before I was actually gonna play one, I've learned my lesson. Alexandro is, is one of the broken, best Aqua Force GRs to have. His effect is basically whenever he attacks my opponent's Vanguard at wave two or three, count plus one, I can restand two rear guards and those rear guards get plus five for each face up card in the G zone. Now he's, 
potentially one of the best strides to go into. Um, if I don't have the right setup, if I, if I don't have the right combo pieces, uh, like, like I said before with the whole Maelstrom, having a Maelstrom in the heart, he's usually my first strike to go into. And if I want to finish my opponent, especially against uh, OTT Geese, I was he would be my last strike to go into. He gives me an extra attack, and he also makes those columns more beefier than ever. <clears throat> um, overall, it's just a great, a great strike to go into. That's not Maelstrom. Um, he can flip over any card. So again, another card that can just flip over the G guard and the G guard I can just counter charge with easily and put it back face down. So, um, big, huge fan of Alexandros. I learned my lesson. I was only playing one of him. Definitely not going to play two of them just in case. But um, the card that I actually took out for, Alexand for the second Alexandros was uh, Megiddo. A lot of people are probably going to hate me for this, but uh, Megiddo didn't really do anything. Um... I had chances to stride into Megiddo, but I was like, you know what? My opponent's at four damage. God forbid he actually hits a damage trigger on the fifth one, and it's a tank. And if it's a 10k um, damage check, a dam damage trigger check, then Megiddo doesn't really do anything anymore. No like, I'm just like, okay, I'm not gonna stride into Megiddo. I think Megiddo would, would be a huge mistake. Um, yeah, there were some there were some chances to stride into him when not when my opponent was at five damage. But again, I was just super worried because he, he only gets plus 5. He doesn't get plus 10. Um, I, of course, yeah, it gives me multiple attacks. But I just didn't really see the play coming. Um, it's really, really risky. Not too much of a fan of it. But uh, overall, again, if you guys want to play Megiddo, go ahead. I'm not saying Megiddo is a bad card. I'm just saying so far in this in the premium meta at the moment, um, I just don't think Megiddo is that right for Maelstrom at the moment. But that's just my opinion. Uh, we played the the newest GR for Thavis. His effect is GB3. When uh, for each attack of my rear guards, he gets plus five. On the third wave, counter plus one. Um, again, he gets plus five for plus five for each rear guard that attacked this turn. So if I have four attacks that attack before him, he's gonna get plus twenty. Or three attacks plus fifteen, whichever. He can just make um, he can easily make a magic number, especially against uh, OTT geese. And then his other other ability is my opponent cannot guard or grid ones. So um, again, I would usually would stride into him, especially against OTT geese if they're on uh, geese himself. I'd be like, crap! I went through all my resources. He's my last option. Then our last shred we have flood uh, flood hazard dragon. This card uh, doesn't really do anything but besides be a quad drive. Now the reason why you play him is to try to hit double triggers or to try to hit triple triggers. Again, like I said before, guys, it, it's too good to hit two front triggers in one turn. Especially if I have a title soul or if I have two resetting regards, hitting two front triggers is just too good. Now, of course, he's um, besides the quad drive, he's a vanilla. But again, digging for front triggers is just super beneficial. Puts in a lot of work. I wish I played him at regionals, but now I'm playing him now. And whenever, whenever I'm in a tight spot and if I really want to hit triggers... I was straight into him and he actually hits it for me and I was like, yay, I love you Flood Hazard. Um, the card I actually played before him, I was actually playing 5 G guards. I played a Dismal. Um, Dismal, I use it a lot, but then again, I was like, you know what? I have the other G guard that can that can easily protect, protect my rear guards. So I probably shouldn't play Dismal, so I just took it out. I do, I do not regret taking it with Dismal because I prefer to have... I prefer to have the option of having Flood Hazard over Dismal, to be honest. But again, it's just my opinion. If you guys want to play this one, go ahead. But I really like Flood Hazard because again, hitting through front triggers is just too good. Then we have the Fighters Collection G Guard. This card basically does whenever I whenever I G Guard, uh, Counter Bus One, uh, choose up to five rear guards, give them the resist ability, and if they're hit, they can't be retired. Also, it gives plus five to the unit that's guarding for each rigor that was chosen. So, if they attack my vanguard, I can G guard into this kind of us one. I choose all five of my rigors or all six because uh, the Excel circle, and then I get plus five for each of those five rigors to my to my vanguard. So I'll give my vanguard plus 25k on top of this, or possibly uh, 30k on top of this. Next G guard, we have the Ice Barrier Dragon. This card. I misplayed actually really, really badly one game. Um, I keep thinking his effect is on wave two and wave three, but no. So his effect only activates during wave one and wave four. And I, 
he's basically a 30, 36k guard or a 37k guard. Pretty simple. Last G guards we have this beautiful lady. What she does is basically I can G guard and she gets plus five if if it's the second or third third attack. But besides that, we mainly play her for the fact that her GB skill. Uh, I can Soul Blast one, uh, put her face down again in my G zone, and then I can flip over any card on my field or in my damage zone. So I can counter charge with her, I can unlock my units with her. Um, her effect goes off really easily, just for the fact that a lot of my strides I can flip over any, any card. Uh, as for example, I can flip her over with uh, Alexandros and with uh, uh, Engulf Maelstrom. So I do get her effect off like usually twice a game or once a game, uh, God forbid three times a game. But again, this is the main the main counter charge, the main uh, unlocking support that I have in Maelstrom at the moment. A lot of people underestimate her. I, over, I think I might bump her down to one because I kind of don't see a point in playing two of her. I kind of, I mean, this, to be honest, if, if you're going to keep activating her effect to counter charge and put her face down again, I'm just like, you know what? I kind of don't see a point in playing two, playing two of her. Might bump it down to one. Might play another G guard. Might play this one, maybe. I don't know. But uh, overall, one of the best G guards that Alka Force has, especially against uh, Link Joker. So yeah, guys, that's my Maelstrom deck for premium. Uh, again, with this deck, I had a lot of fun, especially at regionals. At regionals, a lot of people liked it. A lot of people liked my build, gave me compliments. Um, and you know what? It just made me so happy. I'm so happy to play this deck. I'm still going to play this deck, probably going to play against my teammates and have some fun games. Overall, I think you guys should try this deck out. This deck is, I mean, it's not super cheap, but this deck is very for, is very affordable uh, compared to getting OTT keys. Um, so if you guys want to play it, go ahead. A lot of the singles for this for this uh, build or this deck is not that expensive. I just have some of my cards that speed out. That's just me though. But yeah, I highly recommend for you guys to, to play this deck. Hopefully this uh, deck profile will, in, will inspire you to play Maelstrom. Overall, I had so much fun playing this deck, and I'm pretty sure you will too. If you guys have any comments, please leave a comment down below. If you guys like this video, please hit that like button. And as always, and as always guys, miss you, miss you, love you, love you. Deuces.